This is KGW News at 5. All right, so first at 5, the rain is tapering off at this point, and the water is starting to recede along the coast. And some high water lingers in typical trouble spots after days of heavy rain, but it's good that it's letting up. Let's get right to meteorologist Joe Ranieri now. So, Joe, we're starting to see things dry out throughout the area. Absolutely. And finally, I think for a lot of people, especially along the Oregon coast, we basically have seen rain, which seems nonstop since Wednesday night and up to this point. As we look at the radar, we start to see a little bit of some drier conditions throughout a northwest Oregon along Astoria and Seaside, who basically have been kind of seeing the brunt of the uh, atmospheric river that we've been seeing here the last couple of days, but still dealing with some lingering showers over New Eugene and Southern Oregon. You travel over the mountain passes. It's not going to be rain showers late tonight. It's going to be the snow showers. Snow level drops down to anywhere from about 2000 feet to 2500 feet, regardless below pass levels. So if you're traveling in that direction, be prepared for several inches of new snow over the next 12 to 18 hours, anywhere from two to five overnight. And we're picking up a little bit of some snow showers as we speak. Looking at some of the watches and warnings, basically we're done with the flood watch that was in place uh, throughout the, uh, much of Western Oregon. Now this green colors that gray the Grays River over in southwest Washington flood warning in effect until about 1240 on Monday afternoon and a flood watch in effect until tomorrow night. You travel down to the southern Oregon, you're going to be running into some snow showers, snow level about uh, about 4000 feet if you're going to be traveling over just east of uh, of uh, Medford and into the southern part of the Oregon Cascades. Winter weather advisory in place anywhere from four to eight inches of new snow overnight. I'll let you know what you can expect to see heading into tomorrow. And yes, I'm tracking drier conditions. I also will let you know what you expect to see for Christmas Eve and more importantly, Christmas Day. Yeah, very important. Joe, thank you so much. Well, as he said, the last couple of days of fall have been the wettest we've seen all season. In fact, rainfall amounts over the last four days are over two inches and along the beaches, they got slammed with rain, wind and flooding too. That sounds like so much fun. Art Edwards joining us now with more on how bad things have been at the coast. Art. Well, Maggie, things really were bad for a while. They really saw that heavy weather there, but it does seem like things are started to maybe taper off a little bit. As Joe said, we're starting to look at like we've gotten through the worst of the weather, uh, but there have been issues all over Oregon and even up into Washington. Things are looking better on the Oregon coast. In Seaside, the water is going down in the Nakanakum River. This is Highway 101, just outside of town. The high water signs are still out, but there's no longer enough water on the road to stop traffic. The surf is up in the ocean, and we found at least one person who decided to test the waves. Further south on 101 in Tillamook County, the water has also begun to recede. The Tillamook River caused some local minor flooding earlier this week. In places, there is still some water over the roads, but not enough to stop traffic. Some fields were also flooded around Tillamook. Some Amtrak passengers were delayed when a landslide covered railroad tracks near Seattle. We caught up with some of those stranded passengers Friday night. It made for a stressful evening. Yeah, because a lot of us have been here. I've been myself since like 1.30. I've been sitting with a gentleman. He's been here since 11 o'clock this morning. So, yeah, there's a lot of people wanting to get home to their families on Christmas. Now, we checked with Amtrak just a little while ago to see how things are going. They say that they're using shuttle buses right now to get passengers through the area that's closed. Uh, they do not expect the trains to be running again until probably about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Maggie? All right, Art Edwards live for us. Art, thank you so much. So the rain also caused a lot of problems south of Seattle. In fact, a mudslide sent debris falling onto a road, a road near some homes in Des Moines, trapping people inside for a while. The photos and videos show you the extent of the damage. We've seen a lot of them from that area, and the city says crews are working to clear that roadway so that people trapped in the neighborhood can get through. Been here for 10 years and never seen anything like this happen. Um, I understand things do happen, so this is unfortunate. But the crews out here seem to be doing a great job cleaning things up. We appreciate their work. No injuries, thankfully, have been reported at this point, but a worker did get stuck from the pressure of the rushing water. And the stormy weather sent a couple of damp and gloomy records in Seattle as well. SeaTac Airport recording more than three inches of rain yesterday, making it the fifth rainiest day in city history. Also on Friday, uh, some flooding broke a record for measured sunlight and that, as the University of Washington recorded the lowest level of sun energy in 20 years. All right, keep up to date on the forecast anytime with the KGW app. You can get uh, check conditions daily or check the live radar. 
So homeless advocates are stunned that the mayor, within a day of hearing their pitch to shut down homeless sweeps in Portland, basically told them no. And we just heard from the executive uh, director of Street Roots, the local paper that covers homeless issues. Before you hear her take, let's get some background on this. The city council next month is set to vote on a new five year multi million dollar contract with the biohazard firm Rapid Response. This is video of their crews clearing out and cleaning up homeless camps in Portland. Homeless people and advocates want that contract and that practice mixed. They say the sweeps are traumatizing and long term, they say it makes it harder for homeless people to get off the streets. Thursday, they rallied, asking the council to give them six months to come up with an alternative plan. Yesterday, the mayor, in short, said no. He argued the process of clearing camps is humane. The camps themselves are not. So now, here is Kaya Sand from Street Roots. You know, to me, it just feels a little bit absurd, and I think it's really important for us in the city to say so. So we just want to slow things down so we can have a conversation and really, you know, align values, because I think the values themselves aren't so misaligned, but say, okay, how do we actually spend money as a city um, that are aligned, that, that is aligned with those values? All right, so according to its website, last year, the city of Portland carried out more than 2,800 sweeps of homeless camps. There are more than 2,000 people living on our streets. All right, lightening things up. Thousands of kids here in Oregon will have a brighter holiday thanks to people like you. A lot of our viewers, we collected more than 42,000 toys and 600 bikes this year through the KGW Great Toy Drive. And now it's time for the best part. We love this every year. We get those toys to families so their kids can have presents come Christmas morning. Brittany Falker stopped by a Portland church where they were distributing toys today. Brittany, what was that like? It was absolutely awesome, Maggie. And it really was more of a shock experience for these families, kind of like a day at the mall, only this time it was inside a church. And every part of today's toy distribution was done with dignity. I got to meet some of the people that you're directly helping through the KGW Great Toy Drive, each with a unique story to tell. Okay. All right, Merry Christmas. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Shoppers on the hunt for the perfect presents. I want this one for Mario. Scouring the aisles of this pop-up shop of sorts at Manor House Church in Northeast Portland. Like there's so many options. All of these toys donated through the KGW Great Toy Drive. I think it's very amazing that we have this opportunity to go around and pick stuff for who we choose. The goal for the church's nonprofit, Live Love, isn't just to make sure that kids get their gifts, but also to give parents a real shopping experience. They walk through the door, they feel most importantly just love, but then they get to pick whatever they want. And it's, it, it's a common occurrence, not to see smiles, but to see tears. Tears of joy and often relief. Well, it takes a real heavy load off my back. This Christmas is especially difficult for Angelica and Christina Blanco. This past year, they lost their mother to a blood infection. Their father is a double amputee living with disabilities, and that left these two sisters to care for seven children in their home. Well, I had to stay and have to finish what my mom couldn't do. She wasn't sure her family would have presents to open this year, but that changed today. I thought they weren't going to have a Christmas. I thought we were just going to have a tree and maybe one or two under there, but now there's going to be a, quite a lot of them under there when they wake up. And especially two bikes. Bikes delivered by Portland police officers. We got blessed today, and I appreciate it. Along with picking out gifts, shoppers got a hot meal, some entertainment, and expert wrapping help. Really, this is, this is like Christmas morning for me. I get to cry and laugh and see thousands of lives touched. Lives like the Blancos and so many more who will have a Merry Christmas this year because of our community. So it's, you have to be cheerful. You have to be grateful for each other. And bless you, the community you have. So many more people just like Angelica will be feeling that love to this holiday season thanks to generosity through our toy drive. Now between Manor House Church's four locations, Pastor Mark says that they'll help around 10,000 families this weekend alone. We can't say it enough. Thank you to everyone who contributed to the KGW Great Toy Drive this year. I think it's pretty obvious you made a big difference. Yeah, it was a huge success yeah. per usual. Brittany, thank you so much. That was awesome.